So once the user clicks on that booking tab, it will take us to a calendar where they will be able to see any rooms that are booked. So right now there's only one on the calendar that's booked on Tuesday the 9th um, from one to two. So once they're ready to book a room, they do have to be logged into the OPAC they'll be able to hit that button and it will open a form that they will fill out. So the form allows them to pick and choose a date. So I'm going to come in here and I'll pick um, Monday the 15th and I'll select my end time. I want to use it for let's say two hours. And then I select maximum room capacity. Now this again is going to be based off the time in um, or the number of people in the staff side plugin that I have populated. So right now I have a couple rooms in there that fit six or eight people. So I can select the number of people I want. And if I want something in the room, like if there's a projector or an HDMI cable that I might need or a whiteboard, I can select any of these parameters if I need something extra. If they don't need anything, I can just hit check room availability and then that will populate a list of available rooms. So right now I can see there's two available rooms that can fit a max capacity of six. I can select the room that I want, hit select room, and that is going to populate another screen which confirms my information. Since I'm logged into the system, it will then pull in my name and my email address, the room that I want, and the time. Um, so I can see that information right away. There's a box down below that gets automatically checked, and this will send a confirmation to my email address, letting me know that the room has been confirmed. So once I hit that button, I'll have one more screen that confirms that my reservation was accepted and then it sends me an email address. Now, if I wanna do more than one booking, I have a link here that will take me right back to um, the calendar where I can begin that process again. And now you'll notice just from before, we only had that one on the 9th. Now my confirmation is in there for the 15th. So again, the user can go back in and begin that process of um, you know, reserving another room. So fairly easy from the OPAC side. Now I'm gonna jump over to the staff side and we'll look at the plugin. So plugins are controlled through either your tools or your administration. In administration, you can jump all the way down to the bottom on the left-hand side under plugins and then select manage plugins. So what this allows me to do is come in and I can start by looking on the actions drop-down menu. So first I'll talk to you about configuring it. So once it would be installed at your in your Koha system, I can come in and configure. And this lets me set up the actions on the back end. So the first one is add a room. What this will allow me to do is add any rooms into my library that would allow the student to come in and look. So let's say I'm adding room 104. Um, this allows me to come in, I add the number, the max capacity. So, you know, let's say this one's pretty big, this one allows me 10. And in this room, it has a whiteboard. And I can check that box. If it had more, I could, of course, add those as well. Once I hit add room, you'll notice now that I have all of those rooms that are added into my, my current plugin. If I hit that select another action, I can go back in. The other options you can add are room equipment. So now this gives me the opportunity to add in any other options. So let's say I had a um, Alexa in one of them. I could add that in and now that'll show in the current equipment room. So now if I go back and I go to um, add a room or even edit a room, because now I want to add Alexa to one of my existing rooms in here, I can select that 102 and say edit equipment and then go in and say that now Alexa is in room 102. So really easy. So the pretty much the main functionality here is adding the room, adding equipment, and then um, allowing the user to essentially select what they need for the number of individuals that are going to fit in a room and adding the equipment that's available in that room. Um, you do have some options for setting up like restricting certain patron categories, um, you know, only allowing them to reserve in um, 
so many days in the future, um, the max number of hours they can reserve for, and I'll show you that next. So OPAC max future date, that's just basically telling the user um, they can, I have this set to 30 days, meaning they can reserve up to 30 days in advance. So this would allow you to set whatever that number is. So this is just allow me, allowing me to update it. So let's say I only wanted to say 15 days, I can say add restrictions and now that's taking me back to that, um, you know, 15 days in advance. The other option you have is OPAC max time, and that allows you to say, um, essentially, how long can they have one of the rooms for? I have mine set to two hours. You know, you can set it to whatever you want, one hour, two hours, the option's yours. The other options you have here, um, restrict daily reservations per patron. So if you have a limit saying that you can only do one reservation a day, two reservations a day, um, you can come in and set it. Right now I have mine set to three, but of course you could do no limit or set the number of limits that they have. And then the last thing you'll see here is patron categories. So like in my case, I have self-registered patrons cannot um, book a room at the library. So maybe in your case, like a community member or a visitor may not have the privileges to book a room at the library. So what this does is this allows you to um, put a little message in here that says, if you're a self-registered patron, please come into the library to obtain your card, you know, or whatever, whatever value or whoever you're not allowing to register, um, you know, you can just leave them a special message. So now I'm going to go back and I'm going to show you one more aspect and that's the room reservations plugin. If I come over here to actions and run tool, um, this allows me to manage blackouts and manage reservations. So the first would be, um, you know, if we want to say that we're turning reservations off for a certain period of time, um, you could say, you know, I'm blocking any type of reservation from, you know, now the 12th through the 16th. Maybe you're getting carpet laid or, you know, something new is happening. You can also do it for a couple hours. So, you know, let's say <clears throat> the morning of next Monday, there were exams and nobody could reserve rooms. You know, you could just add blackouts, meaning no one could register at the lab, you know, in those particular rooms. And then the other option that you have is um, manage reservations. So if I go in here, this shows me all of the reservations that are set to take place or um, have take, taken place in the back. And I can come in here and actually update those. So if I wanted to say like, um, I wanted to delete a certain person, I can come in here and delete the booking. So the functionality is very basic. It allows you to enter in the room, the equipment that's in the room, and then it populates a calendar for the user to make the reservation. Um, currently, the only way to come in here and look at those um, reservations would be to come in and, and view it from the back end in the configuring of the tool. Um, and then, of course, your users get the update right away. But staff can come here easily and you know see any type of reservation that has been made uh, by a user.